Hello, in this video we are going to look at battery technology and more importantly where does it stand with regards to electric aviation. We will also cover the battery developments in the near, intermediate and distant future. On this channel Electric Aviation we aim to bring for you the latest developments from the world of sustainable air transport. We also take a deep dive into technology in our explainer videos. Subscribe to get all of our latest updates. It is often cited that batteries with energy density of 400 watt hour per kilogram are required for electric aviation to truly take off. It is the magic number that is cited again and again. But where does this figure come from and at present where does the technology stand? Let's have a look at it in detail. To unpack the 400 watt hour per kilogram number, let's first go to a widely known fact that is for a unit weight, aviation fuel carries 50 times more energy than a battery. On the other hand, it is also said that we don't need to increase the energy density of the batteries 50 times. We only need to double the existing battery energy density levels to make electric aviation and many of the EV toll aircrafts commercially viable. So why is there such a glaring contradiction? Well, it turns out that the 100 LL F gas that is used in most internal combustion engine aircrafts has an energy density of 44 megajoules per kilogram. On the other hand, the latest batteries of 250 watt hour per kilogram have an energy capacity of 0.9 megajoules per kilogram. So yes, indeed, the aviation fuel has around 48.8 times more energy than a battery. But the efficiency of converting that energy into propeller motion is very different. The internal combustion engine is around 18% efficient whereas electric motors can be up to 90% efficient. Meaning electric propulsion is 5 times more efficient than IC engine propulsion. This also means that the ratio of batteries to aviation fuel does not now stand at 1 to 48.8 but rather 1 to 9.8. Through research, it has also been ascertained that by using efficient aerodynamic design that is only possible through electric aviation technology such as tip propulsors, boundary layer ingestion and distributed propulsion, we can further improve the energy consumption during the flight by 3 to 5 times. Now even if we take an average value of 4, this cuts down the ratio to 1 to 2.45. If we now consider the battery technology improvement from 250 watt hour per kilogram to 400 watt hour per kilogram, then the ratio between the battery and avgas cuts down to just 1 to 1.5. Meaning, if we were to achieve 400 watt hour per kilogram, then with a well designed electric plane, we can achieve 66% of the flight time of the current internal combustion aircrafts. And this will open up a host of passenger transport opportunities for both short and medium range. So this is how we got the number of 400 watt hour per kilogram. The figure was first revealed by Uber Elevate white paper published in October 2016. In June 2019, Elon Musk echoed the same value of 400 watt hour per kilogram as the tipping point for batteries taking over kerosene in a tweet that was in response to a question about batteries for flying. He also claimed that he came to the figure of 400 watt hour per kilogram through his own calculations. In August 2020, Elon mentioned that mass battery production of 400 watt hour per kilogram energy density are just three to four years away. Interestingly, a study published in Nature Energy, which is a very respected journal, in Feb of 2019, showed that batteries with energy density of 800 watt hour per kilogram which is approximately four times as energy dense as the current commercial batteries would be enough to power an airplane the size of an Airbus A320 or a Boeing 737 which seats 180 to go a little further than a thousand kilometers. Having looked at the desirable energy density levels, let's now examine the battery technology and see what are the options, where do we currently stand and more importantly how much further do we need to go to achieve 400 watt hour per kilogram? Tesla in September 2020 announced the 4860 cell. It was revealed that the 4860 tabless cell had five times more energy, but that was strictly in comparison 
to the previous cells that they had used, that is the 2170. Note that the 2170 had five times less volume. There was no mention of improvement in energy density and it can be assumed that the energy density remains at 260 watt hour per kilogram. Having said that, as these new cells generate much less heat, they can be used with minimal thermal cooling systems around them. This will certainly improve the pack level density if used in an electric aircraft. If you look at the lithium ion batteries, they have come a long way over the last decade. In 2010, the battery energy density of the most advanced batteries was 160 watt hour per kilogram and this has risen to 304 watt hour per kilogram in 2020. So while the energy density has doubled, it must be pointed out that it took almost a decade for us to get there. In the lithium ion class of batteries, we are now in a place where we are making progress in very small increments. This is highlighted by the fact that we had reached 260 watt hour per kilogram in 2015 but in the last six years, we have only added 40 watt hour per kilogram. Therefore, even if we look at the NCA or NMC battery chemistries, which have the highest energy densities under the lithium ion umbrella, then it is fair to say that they are reaching maturity. The only possibility of a step change with them is by using silicon anode. But that brings with it a new set of problems, most notably, the swelling of silicon to up to four times of its original size, which creates cracks in SEI layer. Now, there are other battery technologies too that have made good progress in recent years, for example, the lithium sulfur battery and the solid state battery. Although it is not widely known, but lithium sulfur batteries have been and are being used for electric aviation. They were installed in the Zephyr, a solar powered UAV that made the longest endurance flight for 14 days, 22 minutes and 8 seconds. They are low cost, safe and currently have twice the energy density of lithium ion batteries. Lithium sulfur batteries of 400 watt hour per kilogram are available from suppliers such as Oxys Energy and even 650 watt hour per kilogram by Cyan Energy. There are two issues that currently plague the lithium sulfur battery. First is the short cycle life which currently stands between 180 to 300 cycles and the second is the low discharge rates of just 0.2 C. For comparison, the lithium ion batteries used in the automotive industry have at least 800 to 1500 charge cycles till they reach their end of life, which is when their charge holding capacity is 80% of the original value. Likewise, Charge and discharge rates of up to 2C are commonplace for lithium ion. After all, you don't want to wait five times more than what you currently wait for charging of your existing lithium ion batteries. So these are a couple of reasons that are keeping the lithium sulfur batteries away from the mainstream market. However, given that the theoretical energy density of lithium sulfur battery is 2510 watt hour per kilogram, it is worthwhile pursuing this technology. With more research and the use of advanced materials such as graphene to increase the discharge rates, its promise can be realized. It is for this reason that Sony Corporation has also ventured into their research and development. Another technology that is on the horizon is the solid state battery. There are multiple engineering companies that are in the race for developing a EV standard solid state battery and these include the likes of LG, Samsung, A123 and Toyota. The advantage again is not just the shorter charging times but also higher energy density and inherent safety. In December 2020, QuantumScape, a California based company, came forward with a battery that has 390 to 500 watt hour per kilogram of energy density. This isn't just a tall claim, but it is backed up by data that has also been published. This battery can be charged from 0 to 80% of its capacity in just 15 minutes. Furthermore, it also has achieved 800 cycles to meet the current automotive standards. Condomscape is being backed up by Volkswagen, Continental Group and even Bill Gates. The unique features of this battery are solid state ceramic separator and a pure lithium metal anode. 
So a very high performance solid state battery is out there but the real challenge lies in developing methods that would allow mass manufacturing of this battery at a low cost. QuantumScape has mentioned that it will enter mass production by the year 2025 and achieve 91 gigawatt hour scale by 2028. So there is some time before this battery will be rolled out. Automotive manufacturer Toyota on the other hand has indicated that they will be launching their solid state battery based electric vehicles in early 2020s. Toyota batteries therefore will most probably be the earliest solid state batteries to hit the market. Specs of their battery are however unknown. It is also not known if they will sell these batteries separately or keep them part of their own vehicles. Another battery technology worth mentioning is the aluminium air battery. It has reached values of 1300 watt hour per kilogram and has a theoretical maximum of 6000 watt hour per kilogram. The problem with this battery is that it cannot be recharged, although there have been several contrary claims. A possible application for it is one of long duration flights if the battery can be made economically. For this reason, the company Eviation that is producing Alice aircraft are looking into aluminium air batteries as one possible solution for their long range flights. In the long term, we can look forward to lithium air batteries that have a theoretical energy density and order of magnitude higher than current lithium ion batteries. In fact, lithium air batteries with five times the energy capacity of commercial lithium ion batteries have already been demonstrated. There are multiple issues though that have hindered their utility. These include instability, parasitic chemical reactions and undesirable oxidation. Having said that with more research in this area, these problems can be mitigated. At present, we can safely say that we are moving into the era of solid state batteries which will usher in personal eVTOL aircrafts for the short range. There are certainly exciting times ahead with regards to electric aviation. Safe, efficient and sustainable personal aerial vehicles are within touching distance provided we keep progressing in developing battery technology as we have done in the last two decades. And with this the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, please do give it a thumbs up and share it with your colleagues. Thank you for your attention.